This picture-perfect family was stalked by their photo clerk. Soon enough, pictures wouldn't cut it. This is what happened. In a fairly nondescript police station, a picture is taken of a man named Sai. We can see he's in an interrogation room sitting eerily calm with his hands folded together. The door opens and a soft-spoken officer enters. He asks Sai what provoked him to do what he did to Mr. Yorkin. However, Sai does not answer. Instead, his eyes gaze downwards. He thinks about a happy family while noting the power of photography. You've probably heard the term, a picture is worth a thousand words. The truth is, the best cameraman in the world is no match for the human brain. A picture can never match what we see with our eyes, and it certainly can't capture what we feel in our hearts. And yet, somehow, pictures still manage to be valuable. They can be tools, weapons, even. We cut to the woman from his memories, Nina. She greets her husband and announces that she's going to have some photos processed. Yeah, we used to have to do that. The husband, an avid computer enthusiast, asks her to wait so he can show her the new wonders of his latest purchase. A floating chair that spins. Frankly, she's unimpressed. She calls her son to go down with her and they head out. Inside, her son runs off in search of Roblox gift cards while she goes alone to have her photos processed. Sai, an employee at the store, is working behind the counter. Though, when he spots Mrs. Yorkin through the window, he runs over, noting to his new co-worker that he handles the Yorkins. Sai makes small talk with Nina, mentioning that her son Jake must be nine now. In fact, he just turned nine years old that very day. Then, Sai inspects the camera roll and realizes that there's still one photo left to take. In a moment of sheer brilliance, he grabs the camera, turns it towards himself, and invents the selfie. Very nice. Sai promises Nina that he'll have the pictures done before the shop closes, then tells her to go enjoy some time with her son. She thanks him and leaves, completely unaware of what Sai has just created for the world. Remember, it's 2002. This was, this was groundbreaking. Back behind the counter, Sai explains that he has one of the most important jobs in the world. He's responsible for making sure that every photo that comes through the lab is print ready. He makes sure each print is color balanced, cropped to perfection, and crystal clear quality. Because he knows that if the photo doesn't look right, it doesn't matter how many likes it gets on Instagram, it'll still be a disappointment. Wait, that wasn't invented yet. Anyway, the pictures are ready and Nina is there, this time with Jake. Given that it's his birthday, Sai throws in a free disposable camera for the boy. As they're wrapping things up, an observant Sai takes note of the book Nina is reading. At night, he departs the dimly lit store. He walks with a slow, measured pace, almost as if he's trying to conceal the sound of his footsteps. Outside, he spots his car. The windshield has been broken. Meanwhile, Nina and her husband go through the pictures of their son's birthday party when they come across one of Sai. Who's this? Her husband asked, a bit bluntly. Jake chimes in. It's Sai, the photo guy. Great, now we have a picture of Sai, her husband said, sarcastically, before unceremoniously tossing the photo. The brilliance of Sai's invention, the selfie, was at the time lost on Will. On Sai's end of things, he sits gleefully at a diner. As the waitress comes to take his order, she curiously notes what's got him in such a good mood, the photos he's looking at. He mentions that they're of his family before proudly sharing them. She finds them to be beautiful, then hands them back. We catch a glimpse of the photos. This is not his family. These are the Yorkins. Checking back in with them, we find little Jake laying in bed, looking wistfully at his ceiling. What's wrong, sweetie? His mom asked. I'm sad. Why? Someone is sad and doesn't have any friends he explained. Jake's mom found it very sweet that her little boy was so sensitive and caring, but she wanted to know the full story, so she asked who exactly he felt sorry for. Of course, it was none other than Sai. The perceptive boy sensed the loneliness in his eyes. Jake's mom smiled again at how empathetic her son was, but she wanted him to be sure that Sai wasn't as lonely as he thought. Honey, I'm sure he goes home to his wife and kids every night, she said gently. Okay, Jake replied, relieved to know that maybe Sai is happy after all. He drifts off to sleep as we cut to sign his bare apartment, alone except for his pet hamster and several pictures of the Yorkin family on his bedstand. That didn't even come from Ikea. Creepy. Next up, Nina and Will argue in the kitchen. He reminds her how nice their house is and how hard he works for it. If she wants him to maintain this lifestyle, he's gotta stay Sigma male grandin. A dumbfounded Nina counters, questioning if he really believes the words coming out of his mouth. Truth is, this isn't about money or whatever the heck a grind set is. It's the fact that Will's been a neglectful father and husband. Meanwhile, Cyan wise at home with some anime, a typical Saturday night. We pan over to his left, landing on a giant collage of pictures covering the entire wall. It's Nina's family. We see a pregnant Nina, a baby Jake, and all the other life milestones they bothered to capture. As Cy sits there, we see a great longing in his eyes. The next day at work, he realizes that one of the machines is off kilter, so he calls the technician over. The man is very upset, believing Cy to be wasting his time. But Sai dismisses his reasoning. 
explaining that there's a 3% blue shift on the machine, which is massive in his book. As the technician walks off, Sai makes a scene, practically threatening the man. Though, the technician laughs it off and tells Sai to calm back when the machine is on fire. Sai's boss, Bill, looks on with disapproving eyes. During his lunch break, Sai stares at a photo of Nina's family. It is a lovely Christmas night, and they are all gathered around their Christmas tree in their living room. With the help of a vivid imagination, he manages to transport himself into the photo, becoming a part of the scene. Sai stands apart from the family, knowing deep down that he doesn't belong there. Nonetheless, he's grateful for the opportunity to be near them, even if it is only in fantasy form. However, he knows his fantasy can't last forever. But before his daydream ends, Sai wants to get one last look in. Suddenly, he's shaken out of his trance by Bill. He scolds him for causing a scene earlier with the technician, reminding him of his place on the totem pole and telling him to stay in his lane. Sai apologizes and promises not to do it again. Bill walks away before adding that Sai's lunch break ended over an hour ago and wondering what the heck he's been doing in here. Back to work, Sai walks down an aisle. A customer calls for help. Sai turns around and his heart skips a beat. It's Will, Nina's husband. Sai had of course seen his face in pictures a million times, but this was the first time seeing him in the flesh. Will asked a tech-related question about one of the products, but Sai wasn't equipped for the task. So, he called for assistance over the phone, then tried to make small talk while they waited. You're a very lucky man. Will turns his head slowly to face Sai. His expression is that of bewilderment. I'm, uh, I'm sorry? Sai clarifies, noting how lovely of a family Will has. He also adds just how beautiful their home is. There are some undertones of jealousy and envy in Sai's voice. Will doesn't seem to notice, but he was clearly uncomfortable by the fact that Sai knew so much about him and his family. Help arrives, and Sai runs off. Or rather, into Jake, nearly knocking him over. In his hand is an Evangelion action figure. Sai is ecstatic, as he too is an anime enthusiast. Okay, I was joking last time, but this Evangelion thing is real and actually from an anime, which is hilarious. Anyway, Will calls Jake over. It's time to go. He hands Sai the toy since his dad won't let him have that weeb stuff. After work, Sai enjoys a book at his favorite diner. In fact, it's the very book he spotted in Nina's bag earlier. Later, at an outdoor market, Sai happens upon a vendor selling vintage photos. He glances at the photos and immediately becomes fixated on one particular image, that of a beautiful woman. Perhaps she reminds him of Nina. To finish off the evening, Sai takes a nice drive over to Nina's house, parking his car just outside. Then, the unthinkable happens. He enters the empty home, taking in all the sights and smells. He stops at the fridge and finds lovely family photos, ones he's probably already obsessed over a million times over. However, he also spots the selfie he took. A smile paints over him. Then, he takes a loving dump in the toilet. Nice. Before checking out Jake's room. It's a mess, just like he thought it would be. He remarks how his mother's probably always telling him to clean it up. Then, he spots a sweater laying around and puts it on before flopping down on the couch and turning on the TV. He greets Jazz by name while chilling out and having a refreshing drink. Suddenly, noises emanate from the door. It opens. The family is home. That's a cool door, by the way. They close in on Sai. He's got no time to hide and instead just sits there, frozen, like a deer in headlights. The tension reaches a fever's pitch, and that's when they spot him. Hey, Sai. They warmingly greet him. Jake runs over. Uncle Sai, can you help me put this together? Sai snaps back to reality. Coincidentally, that's the same song playing on the radio. Just kidding. His face is grim as he drives off, back to his lonely existence. The next day at work, Sai tends to a customer when he recognizes her, though he can't quite place the familiar face. We cut to little Jake at a soccer game. He looks off towards the bleachers and finds Sai, waving back. Oddly, he's the only one there. As Jake walks over, his coach calls back, making sure everything is alright, considering he's never seen this old man before. Sai says he was walking home from work and happened to spot him. The pair walk off. Sai recounts his bleak childhood. He was one of the fat kids, and as such, seldom touched grass. He was also bullied a lot. Sad. Sai tries to give Jake a toy, the Evangelion figure. Jake declines. Sadly, his parents won't let him walk in the door alive holding that. And I gotta respect that. That show was whack. Back at the mall, Sai spots Nina from afar at the food court. She's on the phone, seemingly deep in conversation. He strides over, determined to make her his standout memory of the day. She pauses her call as he nears. He makes eye contact trying to pull off an awkward smile that won't reveal how nervous he actually is. Her eyes flicker with recognition when she sees him, and she looks down, as if to say, not right now. She continues her phone call, a conversation about her marriage troubles by the sound of it. Sai makes himself comfortable near her table and listens in on what little he can hear of their conversation. She's clearly frustrated with Sai being nearby, saying on the phone, I really can't talk about this now, before hanging up abruptly. She turns to him, I'm so sorry about that, work problems. 
Sai replies, No problem, I was just admiring this beautiful day. Nina smiles politely and the pair chit-chat. She mentions how thoughtful Jake is and how he really adores Sai. This warms his heart and he responds that he often feels like he's Uncle Sai. Then, she asks if he has a family of his own. Nope, not even a wife. Girlfriend? Not that either. But he does have a mom. Sai whips out a photo of her. But it isn't her, is it? It's the vintage photo he purchased earlier. Nina has to get going now. As she gets up, Sai whips out the Deepak Chopra book he's reading. Well, I'll be. What a coincidence. They bond over their shared love of literature and philosophy. Sai recites some passages, with Nina remarking that she didn't realize he was such a deep thinker. Of course, we know the real reason he has this book. We cut to Sai wearing a creepy hazardous suit, filling something into a machine. His boss Bill watches him on the camera before calling him to his office. Once Sai arrives, Bill tells him that there's been some issue in the photo department. Unaccounted for photos have been turning up. Sai claims ignorance and gives many excuses as to why this could be happening, but Bill knows better. He's already checked around and all roads point to Sai. Frankly, he doesn't care what exactly sai has been up to, but this, in combination with his extra long lunch breaks, making a scene the other day, is all just too much. Bill fires him on the spot. Sai lashes out with a rageful fervor, but what's done is done. He has one week left. During his moment of weakness, Nina and Jake stop by to process more photos. Sai handles their order as usual, though he's not his usual self. He's quiet and withdrawn. Nina asks if he's okay, but he just smiles unconvincingly, hiding the true pain that lies beneath. After, and in the back, he collapses on the floor, clutching a picture of the family. He cries his eyes out before running home and doing the same. This time, he notices something peculiar in one of the photos. He takes out a magnifying glass and zooms in on a particular face. Oh my god. He rushes back to the store and searches for Maya's file, the woman he recognized but couldn't place. During his inspection, he finds the unthinkable, Will. With Maya, how could he? The next day, Sai bids his co-worker farewell for the last time. While walking down an aisle, something catches his eye. He shifts himself into reverse and examines a giant hunting knife. Talk about an employee discount. Sai sits in his car waiting for Nina to pick up her pictures. Then, he follows her on the road. Suddenly, her car swerves, nearly crashing. Sai pauses and waits. We cut to inside the car. Nina has uncovered the pictures of Maya, planted by Sai, of course. She's distraught, and Jake is, I, I don't know, he's, he's kind of chilling. Nina and her son continue home with Sai following suit. He waits outside their house, camera in hand, hoping to capture a confrontation, but it never comes. Seemingly, Sai is more angry than she is. He dashes home, and that night has horrifying nightmares. Oh look, there's our thumbnail. He awakens and stares at the Evangelion figure. It calls to him. The fallen angel holds a blade, just like his very own. It's time to take action. The next day, Sai takes pictures outside a home while describing the origin of the word, snapshot. Apparently, it originated as a hunting term with regards to birds. He takes the pictures to the store to get processed, but is immediately halted by Bill, who wishes him to stay away. Given that Sai personally calibrated this store's photo machine to perfection, he's adamant about doing his pictures here. Bill permits it, just this once, something he'll soon regret. Shortly after Sai is done, Derek enters Bill's office. You're gonna want to take a look at these. Bill has a look. He sees pictures of his daughter, pictures taken by Sai. His face goes white. The police are called in and question Bill before assuring him an APB has been put out. The clock is now ticking for Sai, who's at Will's workplace, watching, waiting. He sees him get in a car with Maya, then follows. Meanwhile, the police enter Sai's apartment, guns drawn. They look for him, but instead find his collection. The giant collage now features a peculiar new distinction. The husband has been scratched out of every photo. Back to Sai, he follows Will and Maya to a hotel. He calls them posing as room service. He's able to get their room number by guessing the wrong number and having them correct him. Big brain time. This gives him the opportunity to call the real room service and cancel any deliveries to their room. Sai then gets a room adjacent to Will and Maya's. He goes to their door and knocks. When they tell him to leave it out there, he claims that it needs to be signed. Then, Maya approaches the door. Sai listens out for her footsteps, then violently slams the door open, smacking her face in the process. He pulls out his big hunting knife and begins issuing commands. He proceeds to take humiliating photos of them. After the ordeal, he goes back to his room and lies perfectly still, expressionless even, in bed. The cops arrive at the hotel in an effort to get to the bottom of things. My God, is that Agent Coulson? They make it to Sai's room, but he's gone. He's on the run. He evades capture as Agent Coulson checks in on Will's room. Fortunately, both him and Maya are fine. The same can be said for Sai, who's finally reached his end. We revisit the scene from the beginning. Sai being interrogated, he explains his motives. Will was a neglectful father to a beautiful family, 
a family he envied. Sai's father, too, was neglectful. He did things no father should ever do to their child. He took pictures of him doing things a child should never have to do. The officer understands and walks off. Sai looks to his side and once again imagines himself amongst the Yorkin family. Moral of the story? Evangelion just wasn't that good of a show, guys. Come on.